Welcome back to the workshop friends. Today I've got something kind of universally firearm like for everyone. Uh, this one is definitely not uh, necessarily air gun specific, but it definitely uh, helps me in my air gunning pursuits. Um, here we've got the lovely UMRX uh, Nodos modeling our, uh, our sandbags. And I talked about this on the podcast. Um, and I, what I was getting at was, you know, when you buy these sandbags, like replacements, uh, you, you can order them without fill. And that saves you a ton of money because they just come in um, as fabric, empty fabric bags. And then you've got to put something in them to make them, uh, to make them weighty. And I began experimenting with what I thought acceptable fills would be to get a nice combination of squishability where they can they can conform to the vehicle nice and also weight and uh, you can go you can go way out in the weeds on this and actually make these too dang heavy we're going to get into that in a minute okay folks so what we've got this is the kind of drab green bag set um, my affiliate link below uh, has a really killer deal on two sets of these bags and uh, I've found them to be as good or better than anything from Caldwell uh, and a lot less expensive and I have to say I left my Caldwell bags out in the rain once and they were destroyed whatever fill was in there expanded with moisture and literally blew the seams right out of those bags so that was the end of my Caldwell bags that I had honestly had for years but I picked up these from Amazon. They're inexpensive. And I was like, well, what am I going to fill them with? Um, so this, this set of bags, uh, the drab ones, are filled with plastic beans and play sand. Now, you can get a lot of different feels out of these bags by the size and the shape of the aggregate you use to fill them. Uh, the plastic beads all have rounded corners. And the sand actually is kind of cubic. It's square. So what it gives you is actually quite a nice feel to these bags. And the weight is a lot more reasonable on these guys than option number two that I filled these with. The darker green set. So the drab weighs in. The large bag is 11 pounds, 15.7 ounces. And again, that's plastic beads and sand. Probably about... 60% plastic beads and the rest is play sand but honestly the play sand kind of fits in between those voids created by the plastic beads uh, same basic ratio in the small bag here and the small bag on this guy is three pounds four ounces so pretty reasonable weights I wouldn't mind hauling these around to the range um, but I, I really like a heavy bag when I'm when I'm shooting for accuracy and I thought, well, how far can I take this? Now, I know I could get carbide shot or lead shot. But honestly, I didn't want to put lead in these, in these bags because I'm pretty sure the lead dust is going to accumulate. And it's going to come out through these the pores in the fabric. And I, I didn't want lead shakers hanging around in my range environment. So these guys, I used steel shot, galvanized steel, and glass beads. Glass beads are used for uh, blasting cabinets and stuff. They're for removing paint. And they're nice because they're spherical and they're really dense. And I'm telling you, <laughs> these bags came out super heavy. They're very nice. They're very nice to shoot out of, off of there. They don't move around. They stay planted. They're great. But they are freaking heavy. So these guys... Uh, again, filled with steel shot and glass beads and a teeny amount of sand. I didn't have quite enough of the uh, steel shot and the glass beads, so I had to fill a little bit more with sand, but for the most part, that's majority of what's in here. And these guys for the large bag, 23 pounds, 15.9 ounces. So basically, this one bag, this guy right here, is 24 pounds. Um, crazy the little one is still five pounds 10.9 ounces so still pretty chunky but man i'll tell you what you want a stable no nonsense uh 
set of rest bags for your for your range exercises. Um, the steel shot and glass beads are uh, are definitely pretty good. Are they going to wear the bags out a little earlier? Yeah, I imagine the seams are going to get stressed from carrying all that weight in time. But I got to say, these bags are holding up great, and I've been using both of them. I love them both. Um, I think this one has the right combination of stability and weight. These guys, not nearly as portable. I wouldn't want to haul these up to my mountain range um, for my firearm activities. But for, for air gun use out here on my range right outside the shop, I really like these heavy bags. Now, I'll put links down below to everything but the steel shot. You'll have to source that yourself. But I can definitely give you um, a link for the plastic beads that I used and these bags themselves. Place and you can get that at any any hardware store or Home Depot or any of the big box stores are going to have that. So anyway, do experiment. Do play around. These bags are cheap enough and they're easy enough to fill. And we'll take a look at what it takes to fill one of these guys really quick. This flap. You just push it out from underneath the belt there, and then it's Velcroed, and that's it. You just pour whatever media you want down in there, and you get the, uh, you can control the tension on the fabric by how much fill you put in, how far you overfill them. Put that Velcro back on. and then thread it right back through this opening. And I don't know, I haven't seen any leakage from these bags at all. Um, I kind of like them, especially for the cost. They're really inexpensive. Great addition to your range kit. Doesn't matter whether you're a firearm guy or an air gun guy, they work really well. Check it out. Remember friends, be a light in the darkness. That's all for this episode. Have a great day.